Researchers at the University of Washington have demonstrated for the first time that it's possible to infect a computer with information stored inside DNA. The strands containing the code can compromise a computer system when they are scanned in a sequencer. Lee Organic is one of the researchers on the project. So Lee, this is some pretty incredible, if disconcerting, research. Can you take us through the process and explain how this discovery works? Yeah, so essentially what we've done is we've taken a biomolecule, in this case DNA, and what we did is use that to infect a computer, as you said. So what we did is we took a program and we modified it, a software analysis program, and uh, we created a known vulnerability in it. And so what we were able to do is say, okay, what series of zeros and ones, the binary that computers use, will compromise the software? And then from there, we can translate that into DNA. So for example, a zero and a one would be an A, a zero, zero would be a G, something like that. And then we could output this strand of DNA that when read by the sequencer, uh, would give the information this series of zero, uh, this series of A's, T's, G's, and C's to the analysis software, and then when that software was reading it, actually what would happen is those series of zeros and ones would get executed in a malicious way and end up taking over the computer. So what we found is this actually really difficult. This might not sound too novel. I mean, obviously computer software can be attacked and compromised, but what we found it was really tricky to get this biomolecule to act in a way that we wanted it to. Translating from those zeros and ones to nucleotides is quite tricky. Um, so essentially what we did in this study was prove that theoretically it is possible to use DNA to infect a computer, uh, but in practice it's extremely difficult. Um, we hope that this will never manifest. We're hoping that you know, security researchers practice good hygiene when they're writing this code that's going to be analyzing DNA data and that this never actually ends up being a real problem that people face. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know, DNA isn't being used to transmit much digital information. Uh, so A, correct me if I'm wrong, but B, if I'm right, then what is the concern here? What, I what is the problem with this being possible? Right, so the, the concern is that if more and more software gets written to analyze DNA, well, DNA is being analyzed more than ever before, um, and more and more companies and more and more uh, researchers are analyzing this DNA data. The concern is that when the software is being written, it's not being written securely. And so you could potentially open yourself up to a vulnerable attack through this DNA. But um, in, in, an attack of what, yeah. though? Ah, okay. So when you have a, um, a computer that's running this software, um, and let's say you're compromising that computer, then you could potentially have access to all sorts of information. You could have access to uh, genomic data, you could have access to intellectual property, um, if, for example, you're a research lab or somebody in industry who's trying to develop, uh, you know, something that requires DNA sequencing, uh, or, you know, you could also have potentially something more malicious and tamper with genetic DNA found at a crime scene, for example. So there's quite a bit of pressure for us to examine this before it really becomes a practical concern. So you talked about some of the malicious, potential malicious uses. Are there any beneficial applications of this discovery? Well, the beneficial application of this study was finding that this is an extremely difficult attack um, to successfully execute. Um, so the benefit of the study was finding that right now this is not an issue, and if software uh, writers are on top of their game, it's never going to become an issue. Um, in terms of a benefit of using this kind of DNA attack, if you will, you can imagine um, a company making a genetically modified crop who's, you know, it's very expensive to be able to uh, create this sort of genetically modified crop. And so to keep other people from stealing those DNA sequences and kind of for free getting access to those sequences, you can imagine them potentially exploiting this uh, software uh, deficiency and making it so that it's impossible for other people to read their sequences. Trying to understand the concerns here. Are these specific basically to what we think of as DNA applications, that DNA is used, as you say, for crime scenes or for, you know, all kinds of, you know, genome stuff? Or is there a future where DNA is being used as like a USB drive and this is a way to hack data more broadly? So I would say that right now the field of uh, DNA sequencing is growing, you know, better than exponentially. I mean, it's growing at an incredible rate. And so it's very hard to predict what it will be used for in the future. Um, but the nice thing about this study is it kind of applies to any application that could be used in the future. Um, all of those applications are going to need software to analyze this DNA data. And so this study was kind of targeting broadly any application in the future 
um, you know, let's, let's clean up that data, practice good security hygiene, um, make it secure. And, and that could include things like, you know, you said crime scene DNA testing, um, genomic testing in a healthcare setting, or things that aren't even possible today that we can't possibly imagine. And now we know. Lee Organic at the University of Washington, thanks so much. Thank you.